Here are nature's most extraordinary parents. With number three, you're in for a surprise. Number seven, at the top of our list is the African elephant, the largest land mammal in the world. African elephants weigh about 12 thousand pounds and stand roughly at 10 feet tall now don't let their size fool you by and large they are gentle giants they say it takes a whole village to raise a child and elephants have taken that maxim to heart the mother is responsible for providing milk to her newborn but when it comes to caretaking and other maternal responsibilities the whole herd steps in the mother will get a lot of help Help from aunts, sisters, and cousins who serve as nannies. The African elephant gives birth every three or four years. Why reproduce so infrequently? The reason is simple. Their gestation period is no trunk-aided affair. It lasts a whole two years. That's a crazy long time to have an elephant in your belly. An elephant calf is usually born into a large family headed by an older female elephant who serves as the matriarch. They're like the Italians of nature. Calves depend closely on their mothers, usually for about 10 years. Elephants are real mama's boys that way. The African elephant moms are tender and loving, and the term for the elephant mother is the cow, which seems a little harsh. Learning to walk can be quite daunting for a nascent elephant. The cow will assist her baby when it tries to stand and will help them to walk while guiding them with their trunk. If the weather is extremely hot, the mother will push the baby underneath her own shadow while crossing clear areas, and she'll do the same if a predator attacks. As great as this parental method is, it also has a downside. Unlike other mammal babies, elephant calves are extremely dependent on the care of their mother. If anything goes wrong in the herd, the calves are in immediate danger to predators and other natural disasters. It's important to know that the cow is very protective towards her calf. This usually means aggressive behavior against any perceived threat. So we would not suggest approaching a baby elephant on your next safari, unless you'd like to live the rest of your life as a pancake. Number six. Coming in at number six is the Adelie penguin. These penguins were named from Adelie land, where they were first scientifically found back in 1840 by the French explorer Jules Dumont Deville, who decided to name this portion of the Antarctic continent in honor of his wife Adele. This dude makes the rest of us guys look horrible. Hey baby, I got you some flowers. Oh yeah, well Jules got Adele a continent. These Adelie penguins have to breed and raise their babies in one of the coldest places on Earth, Antarctica. Before the baby penguins are born, the fathers make an extraordinary trip to the nesting area by walking approximately 3,000 miles in order to prepare their nests for their chosen partner. But the whole time, they get to listen to Morgan Freeman narrate, so the journey isn't all that bad. The male must pile stones high up from the ground so that the eggs won't freeze. Once the nest is ready, they will both take turns keeping the eggs warm because if the egg goes unprotected for as little as five seconds, it will become an eggsicle. Once the eggs finally hatch, which usually takes about 35 days, the parents will take turns protecting their babies while the other goes searching for food for the family. After about two months, the chicks become independent and the parents can finally chill. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified of new videos, and we always appreciate a big thumbs up for five. The giant Pacific octopus, also known as the North Pacific giant octopus, is the largest octopus species in the world. They can lay as much as 100,000 eggs at a time. The mother guards the eggs once they are laid. She protects them against any fish with a caviar craving and constantly wafts currents of water over them to make sure they have a continual supply of oxygenated water. The mother octopus will carry and protect the eggs for 53 months. And once she's finally done, she dies. Octopi are one of the unfortunate species that 
die after they mate or give birth. The male octopus will either fertilize a female's eggs himself or he will give the female his sperm to keep until her eggs are ready to be fertilized. After that task has been completed, the male octopus will die. If that was the end result for human intercourse, I think I'd just stick to the internet. The female also dies about two months after the eggs are hatched. If that's not enough, when mating, there is a risk that the females get so hungry that instead of banging, they eat their potential mating companion. And not like eating in a good way. They go full Hannibal Lecter on the male. But to be honest, that sounds better than some of my Tinder dates. It only takes about two or so octopi out of each clutch to survive and reproduce to keep an octopus population steady. We wish you the best of luck, little baby octopi. Your lives sound horrible. Number four. Number four on our list is the seahorse. When it comes to birth, the seahorse is probably the most progressive member of the animal kingdom in regards to the division of labor. You see what I did there? Labor, like the word for work, but also the term for the process of giving birth? I'm on fire today! The first step in pregnancy is that the female will deposit her unfertilized eggs into the male. The male will then carry the eggs in his pouch for about 45 days. The male supplies the eggs with prolactin, which is the same hormone responsible for milk production in pregnant mammals. The daddy seahorse will also keep blood flowing around the embryos, control the salt concentration in the pouch, and provide oxygen plus nutrition to his babies until it's time to give birth. When the seahorse babies, which are called fry, are ready to be born, the male expels them with muscular contractions. Seahorse males typically give birth at night and are ready for the next batch of eggs by morning when the mate returns. This guy's a machine! Like most of the fish species, seahorses don't nurture their babies after giving birth. Because of this, only 0.5% of infants survive to adulthood due to predators or sea temperature changes since their bodies are extremely delicate. For seahorses, it's really a quantity over quality strategy. Number three, the strawberry poison dart frog is a species indigenous to Central America. It gets its name because the native human population population uses the frog's powerful skin toxins to lace arrowheads, which significantly aids in hunting. These creatures may be as small as a pea, but their parenting skills are titanic. After mating, the female lays three to five eggs on a leaf, then the dad makes sure the eggs stay moisturized daily by urinating on them. Yep. He pees on his babies. They're like the jungle version of R. Kelly, but a little less hip and a lot more hop. Boom! Damn, I'm good. And these golden showers actually help the eggs to stay clean. The father will also keep guard, constantly protecting the eggs from predators, removing any fungus accumulation, and rotating the eggs before they hatch. Once the eggs have hatched and the tadpoles are born, the mother must carry each tadpole to their own pool of water. If she doesn't, the tadpoles will eat each other because they are horrible siblings. After the babies are safe and separated, the mommy frog will make daily visits to feed each tadpole one to five unfertilized eggs. She does this for approximately two months until they begin turning into frogs. During this time, the dad will keep a constant watch for predators. Although both male and female contribute to the parental care, Females invest heavily in terms of energy expenditure, time investment, and loss of potential reproduction. You go, girls! Number two. Cuckoos have figured out a genius and elegant solution to relieving themselves of the difficult work of raising and caring for their babies. Get someone else to do it! Yup, like a rich couple from Beverly Hills, cuckoos pawn their young off on others. Female cuckoos are super sneaky. They lay their eggs in another bird's nest. This way, the cuckoo tricks the other bird, which is usually a completely different species, into taking on the huge responsibility and hard work of raising the chick. The cuckoo chick usually hatches first and grows a lot faster, forcing the other chicks out of the nest. 
and then those typically die. Cuckoo chicks are like the worst house guests. The baby cuckoo then gets the full attention of its adoptive parents. I looked it up and this is actually the etymology for the word cuck. So there's that. Number one. Coming in at number one on our list is the yellow-headed jawfish, also known as the pearly jawfish due to their pearlescent bluish bodies. The jawfish earns its spot at number one because of its high-level parenting skills and dedication. These fish have a huge mouth, which they use to fight off predators. But that mouth has another important function. Once the female has done her job fertilizing the eggs, the male takes all of them and puts them in his mouth. He keeps them in there for seven to nine days, which helps them to stay clean and hydrated. He occasionally spits them out and then collects them back in to ensure that the eggs also get proper levels of oxygenated water. When the eggs finally hatch and the babies are born, they're completely on their own, and the dad is finally free to go gargle some Listerine. Bored Badger. We really couldn't even begin to try to guess what the owner of the car in this picture was thinking when they parked their car. It isn't a nice car or anything that needed all of the extra spaces to ensure that the paint shop wouldn't get dinged up. So we really couldn't tell you what's up.